Hello, denizens. Former Network Executive Reaction Supplemental. In my recent review of Star Trek's Strange New Worlds Episode 2, I said that Spock should have had a tricorder in the Fabergé egg chamber on the comet. I also said it was an asteroid, and the fact that Spock was using a tricorder, that made two egregious errors on my part, which I know will have caused a lack of trust in me from all of you that depend on me for globally significant commentary that will shape humankind's existence from now and into the future. My apologies. And not any kind of apology, but the kind of gut-wrenching, groveling apology. The kind of apology that requires humiliation and being ratioed dreadfully on social media. I stand before you a chastened man. Sorry, ambulating sperm injector. But in my defense, I'd like to present to you the scene in question as evidence of my misdiagnosis. Curious. According to my readings, there is breathable atmosphere inside the chamber. Okay. They walk into the darkened chamber. At 1713, you hear bleep, bleep, bleep. Spock says, according to my readings, there is breathable air inside this chamber. Can anyone see a tricorder? <laughs> I can't. Make sure it's secure. Lieutenant Spock, can you scan the room? I'll do a perimeter sweep. At 1720, Khan tells Spock to do a scan of the room while she does a perimeter sweep. I thought that was pretty sexist, having a woman doing the sweeping. Just saying, because I'm a modern feminist cisgender something or other. Then, at 1730, this exchange takes place between the guy from Galaxy Quest and Uhura. These markings, what do you think, decorative or linguistic? You're asking me. No, I'm asking the thing inside the egg I'm sure is going to jump out and stick its projectile down our throats. Then we get this exchange. Don't study linguistics if you don't want people to ask you questions about it. Okay, fine. It's just the... You're a cadet. It's your first away mission. I get it. But you're here for a reason. This is what we call in the trade wretchedly awful exposition. We want her to do her job. We want to see her doing smart stuff. I have no interest in living her backstory anxiety. Then, at 1807, we get this exchange. These markings, they repeat in the sequence. Sequence, huh? Maybe a code? So was Guy Fliegman making fun of Uhura or doing that awful male encouraging female thing? It sounded awfully condescending to me. I don't know. Just everything seems to point to this egg. Uhura, darling, it's the only bloody thing in the room, apart from, uh, you know, rocks and shit, the other two people wandering about, and Guy Fliegman standing <laughs> next to you. It's important, just I don't know how. Do you think these markings indicate some kind of control? Do you think these markings indicate some kind of control? Dear Lord, she hasn't even discerned if the markings were code yet. And why control of all things? Hieroglyphs were usually recordings of past events. If the markings meant anything, that would have been my first guess. Not instructions on how to put the comet into reverse, you twat. Then Guy Fliegman steps onto the piece of plywood holding the egg in place. Spock clearly is looking at this tricorder here at 1859. Totally missed that. But I think it's Pretty dark, in my defense. Turn him over. Get his helmet off. Guy gets blown back by the Fabergé egg, and the first thing Khan says is to take his helmet off. Why? Was it shattered? Ruined? Broken? The suit must have systems to deal with this kind of trauma. I thought that was exceedingly dumb. Then, at 1934, you can clearly see the tricorder and the handheld spinny doofangly thingy. Yes, I was wrong. 
But by this point, wouldn't anyone be delirious from the absolutely inane dialogue? Who in their right mind would want to review this sequence to find the stupid tricorder? Who would want to purposely torture themselves listening to this just to confirm suspicions? I have agreed to review these episodes for you, my denizens. I did not agree to putting railway spikes in my eyes. Several of you also pointed out other minor imperfections in my review. I appreciated your comments. Let me go over a few of them here. The big one was the whole to-do I made about the Enterprise being at the right place at the right time for this comet adventure. That was so obviously a joke because that is the basic premise of pretty much all treks from time in memoriam. I was not blaming SNW for that. Do I need to put a flashing joke symbol on my videos? There were many comments along the lines that it was Uhura's turn on the landing rotation, so that's why she just had to go on this certain death sortie. I honestly thought that was dumb, but I have gotten a subsequent comment from a Navy vet who said, yeah, the fresh grunts always were sent on those missions. No captain would risk highly trained officers. In that regard, neither Spock nor Khan should have been there, just Uhura and Guy Fliegman. I stand corrected. But then again, we wouldn't have had any TOS adventures either if that, that were the case. However, none of them altered my opinion that this was a stinky show. I hope for a better experience in episode three, honestly. Till next time, denizens. Be seeing you.